Early on Friday morning, we got a train from London Euston to Glasgow and we went for coffee and porridge first thing. Last year when we went to Scotland, we got an overnight sleeper train, but the Avanti West Coast service lets you see the beautiful views of the lowlands as you go north and we spent most of the journey reading and looking out at the view. Then we arrived in Glasgow station and I just love how all of the shops are decorated. Isn't this the fanciest? We quickly popped into WH Smith's because there were books and we love looking at books and then we went and collected our hire car. We're in our hire car now and um, we've got the car hire from Arnold Clark. But everyone was so helpful and so nice. We were trying to sort something out because we were extending the car and after. And we did sort it out. They sorted it out for us, no problem. Shout out to Gary and Emma because you guys are amazing. Ooh. Oh my God, this is so weird. I've never driven an electric car before. <gasps> is it nice? Is it smooth? So weird. <laughs> We've just arrived at Porton Cross and we're going to walk down to the castle. But first of all, can we just look at this view? And over here is the Isle of Arran, which is where we're going to be staying for the next few days. We're going to go visit the castle and then we're going to come back and just read here in the castle. So we made our way up to Port and Cross Castle. Port and Cross Castle was built in 1360 and it was owned by the Boyd family. It has such a rich and interesting history, which we learned about in the mini exhibition in what used to be the cellars of the castle. Look at this way to learn. It tells you the whole layout on a ping pong bat. From the 1600s, local fishermen lived in here and you can still see the little metal rings in the rocks next to the castle where the boats would be moored up. The music's so lovely too, it's so atmospheric. Then in the 1700s the castle was abandoned and instead it was used for the storage of fishing nets and equipment. Oh it, I just felt rain. This is such a beautiful castle, like it's the smallest castle I've ever seen. Um, I was just saying to mum, I love how like you can really see this as a place of residence. You know, like it really does feel like it could have been a home. She was saying that the roof blew off. So if you look up here, that's kind of where the roof used to be. So this would have been one of the bedrooms, but now it's a lookout place. What a beautiful view. It's raining and we're about to go into 
the Seamill Hydro and the Orangery restaurant, which we're really excited to try. Yeah, we realized that it was quite fancy as we pulled in. We didn't realize it was as fancy enough, and then we were like, maybe we should put on a little bit of makeup, so we did. These Good are our go. finished looks. <laughs> the Orangery restaurant was so nice, as you can see, and it has this excellent view overlooking Aaron. The food was also delicious. We got this hummus bruschetta to start, and then I had the vegetable gnocchi, and also lots of tea. This was our table at the end. In 400 meters. Why are you gonna fall backwards? Okay, well that wasn't gonna happen. Okay, <laughs> suddenly I get cold as we're going in, even though the temperature hasn't changed at all. We're on the ferry now. I was expecting, but so we got a food shop and co op of stuff for breakfast for tomorrow. Everything's made of wood, obviously. There's a table and chairs here, then a little kitchenette which has a kettle and a toaster and a microwave, which is bizarre. There's a bed, and then there's a sitting area. So nice. Anyway, we're gonna go and get our cases from the car and then probably just get to bed because we're actually, we're not as tired as we thought we'd be considering that we got up at like five. before five this morning. Good morning, I got this yesterday. Some Scottish oatmeal. Car and we're about to head over to the what's it called? It's called the the Macri Moor Standing Stones. Look at this! It's just started raining and I don't think I'll be needing these. All ready to go out. It is a little bit chilly now, which is nice because I was complaining this morning that it was too hot. All ready to go. I might actually just fill up my pockets with my stuff. So I'm gonna bring my GoPro phone, my notebook. This is the Moss Farm Road Stone Circle. It has been set up to commemorate someone important who's died. They think that there might be a cyst underneath, buried, but they haven't excavated it yet, so they don't know. This was a really wonderful walk we went on where you can see a selection of stone circles dating from 3000 to 1500 BCE. Stone circles are associated with religious ceremonies and like Stonehenge, the main standing stones here align with a gap in the Macri Glen Mountains where at midsummer you'd be able to see the sunrise. I really love ancient history like this and walking around sites like this because it reminds you of how powerful and unchanged the natural world is. The sun still rises, the mountains are still there, the seasons still come and go. It's kind of a reminder of how much more important this and the natural world is than humans and human activity. We've just finished our first walk of the day and I still can't get over how gorgeous this landscape is. Then after that, we drove down to the Aran Museum and I got a peanut butter and banana sandwich. I got a soy milk ice latte with cinnamon and it's so good. It was very prolific actually. So it's documenting the local history of Aran. They had old tool sheds, this old post office. This is the schoolroom. Look at the doll's house. Like, Mum and I are kind of freaking out over the dolls. <laughs> it just felt very wholesome, honestly, and reminded me of day trips as a kid. I don't know, I just really liked it. I just love this kind of history, you know, like local real history. Yeah. I mean, this isn't that old, is it? It's no. like 1940s. Yeah. Look how cute this bed is. Look at 
just learned that my new dream bed. I'm going to say that I'm kind of just obsessed with her dress. Then we left the museum and headed to Brodick Castle where we were going to meet Kate. Just to preface this, Kate is senior ranger at Glen Rosa and taught us all about the Glen. So we started at this roundhouse, which was built by the local community during lockdown using architectural details left by a stone circle. And they also used the same materials that would have been used back when it was built. There were no chimneys in these dwellings, but there would have been a fireplace right in the middle. And so it got very smoky as we were sitting around the fire learning from Kate. So this is a Bronze Age axe head that we believe was found on Aaron, probably is about 4,000 years old. I also tried on this cloak, which was made using the same fibers they would have made their clothes from, which I just found very cool. Based on um, real clothes that were found in the guy who was in the glacier. Then we went up to the squirrel house where you can usually see red squirrels. Kate then took us up to the Glen in her Lamb Rover and still at this point we didn't really know what to expect. Do you have any phobias or anything of animals? Not no. really. Not that I can think of. I thought no. I'm and at Glen Rosie, you can actually see what are known as the big five animals in Scotland, which are seals, otters, red deer, golden eagles, and red squirrels. There are also adders here, and Kate tactically asked if we were scared before telling us that. This Glen, this place, is truly remarkable. I don't even have to say that, I mean, just look at it. The heathered mountains stretched as far as our eyes could see and Kate pointed out all of the plants as we passed. This here is bog myrtle and it smells so good. It also smelled entirely like honeysuckle because of the heather um, and I never realised that heather had a distinct scent until we were walking through. And there was a river too where we paddled our feet. The water was freezing but clear and still there were swimmers actually. Apparently it's known as one of the best swim spots to go in Arran. The only sign of humanity that we saw on this walk were the walkers, but Kate told us that there was a time when the land was used for grazing. So grandmothers and granddaughters would spend the summers out in little houses like this one in the mountains grazing their sheep. And we saw the remainings of one of these houses, they're called shielings, beneath the bracken. The overgrazing though from this has had a lasting effect on the Glen, which is why Kate has launched a reforestry project to repopulate it with indigenous trees. So, so far, 39,000 trees have been planted. Since COVID, we've managed to plant 39,000 trees. And we were lucky enough to be a part of that project today and each plant a tree. This is a baby brown tree and we're going to plant it. So first of all, Kate showed us the proper way to plant a tree. Clear a bit of space for the tree. Soil, we take this is a birch tree, a down birch. I'm just going to take the spade out there, push it into this slot, um, just pat around as well, get rid of any air pockets. Oh, oh there you go. This was such a cool experience, and I ended up planting a rowan right. tree because we were talking about them a lot on our walk. Ah, look at that. <laughs> you want to go the other side? Oh, sorry, it's that way. Yeah, yeah. We're here, the creek king how it's bad luck to cut down a rowan tree and how their star-shaped berries are thought to protect against witchcraft. They're hardy trees and on the walk we even saw one which had grown in a rock, like a rock had cracked around it. There's my tree. My oak. <laughs> Because they've been planted to an edge, 
So we've just said goodbye to Kate and we had the most incredible afternoon. Like, oh, it's such a bar, so uplifting. Then for dinner, we went to the Cory Hotel. Mum got a veggie lasagna and I got a vegan fish and chips, which was actually amazing. It was made from banana blossom. We've both got ourselves a cup of peppermint tea and we're waking up quite early tomorrow morning to go to the Holy Isles to go and see wildlife. We're going on a boat and we're really looking forward to that. We're going to enjoy our tea and read some of our books. Um, I'm reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue still, Addie LaRue still and um, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Hello, doing morning makeup. And we're going out on a boat today to the Holy Isles, which we're excited about. And it's really nice and chilly today, which is nice. <laughs> Have a good bit of chill. Mum and I went on a tour with Lamash Cruises around the Holy Isles and we learnt so much. Honestly, the tour guides were so knowledgeable. This is Paddy's Stone over here. It marks about halfway between Glasgow and Belfast. I didn't realise how rich the history of the Holy Isles was. Basically, in the 6th century, um, a monk called St Molas went and lived in a cave here, and you can actually still visit the cave. Now, however, the Holy Isles has an interfaith dialogue site. We at Lamlash Cruises uh, provide day visitor excursions over to Holy Isle, Holy Isle the island behind me. Allow people to explore the natural beauty of the island, see the unique wildlife that live freely and fairly on the island. And we also do cruises round Holy Isle, allowing people to see all parts of the island, especially the magical east coast which people can't access when walking the island because it's kept free for conservation purposes. Yes, how incredible is that? There's one side of the island that you're not allowed to step foot on so that they can protect it. So mum and I then went to grab a hot drink from this bakery because Grant, who is our tour guide, was going to film that clip for us that I just showed you. So we've just finished our cruise which was so, so good. Um, and we've now gone to this coffee shop. What was it called? Can you remember? No, but we'll find out and we'll find let out. you know. And I'll put it on the screen. Um, but we've got some coffee. I'm just adding some sugar to my latte. We're off to the Time Cafe now for lunch. And apparently they have really good vegan options. I'm so surprised at how many good vegan options there are in Aaron, honestly. Like, I don't know, it's not necessarily because it's quite rural. I don't always expect people to have vegan options, but um, we've been really lucky. And yes, there were good vegan options, but the thing that really excited me was the number of teas that you could get. Um, it took me ages to decide on one. Lorna also took us into the kitchen to show us the oven that they use for flatbreads and Lorna's husband is from Turkey so they are authentically made Turkish flatbreads and they were really good.
<laughs> okay, I'm really keen to try on one of these jumpers. I'm hoping I'll like one of them. I love this style, but it's a lot, so it's probably going to be too big. But let's try them on. It's so big, but I'm also kind of in love with it. If this were in a medium, I think I'd get it. This is the second. And that's the last one. This is the final one, and of them, honestly, my favourite has to be the large one, but they've got a second shop in Brodick, so I think I'm going to go down there and get it from there instead. Also, this is my outfit of the day. I've got tartan skirt with tartan braces, and then this turtle neck. Okay. Good secured, Mum. Got your new jumper oh in here. Oh my goodness, I bought this jumper. Let me show you, it's so exciting. Look at this beauty. <gasps> oh, now we're in the car and we're in the King Caves car park quite tired so we've got some cans of coffee but obviously this one tastes really gross. That one's quite nice. I, I was about to take another sip. I don't want to take any more of it. It's really not good. It looks really nice here and it's so tired. <laughs> If you're curious, this cave is linked to the Scottish myth and story of Robert the Bruce. He was feeling disheartened and so took refuge in this cave, supposedly. And as he was sat there, he saw a spider who was trying to make a web, but every time he would fall down and fail. But he tried again and again and again, and supposedly this gave Robert the Bruce the courage to try again himself. We did one loop. An hour and a half. We're gonna leave for dinner in about 15 minutes, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna do a little bit of work on my book. I'm doing a full read through at the moment and basically just seeing how it reads and I'm sitting outside and the view is just amazing. have just started raining. I think. Yeah, but it's raining. Okay, I'm actually gonna go inside. My outfit of the day, this was in that lovely shop today. And it looks the old so buyer. lovely. So cozy. These trousers from a charity shop but by, by Landmark. Very nice. John Lewis. Such a nice outfit, honestly, it looks so Thank pretty. You. I'm gonna take off the jacket actually because okay. the jacket isn't really part of the outfit but I've got my Sherlock Holmes style jacket, and then nice. I'm wearing this scarf, which Martha got me. Breton, and my favourite your favourite skirt, skirt. Uh, and also my shoes. I literally wear I wear these shoes basically every day. Oops. Chocolate cheesecake for girls. Turning overnight. Yeah, so I didn't notice this yesterday or even today or anything. It's just as we were driving down this road, we've noticed a few orange trees. Like 
it properly looks like autumn. We've now got the heating on full in the car and it started raining. Good morning, it's Monday today and we are leaving the Isle of Arran. It's so beautiful here. Like, look at all the mist on the hills. We're also all packed up as you can see. And that was the end of our trip to Arran. So we just got the ferry back to mainland Scotland and I cannot stress enough how much my mom and I enjoyed this trip. Arran is beautiful and I feel so grateful to have been able to experience that beauty. So obviously I just want to say thank you again to visit Scotland for sending us on this trip. I can really imagine myself living in Scotland one day and still the fact that I'm working with Visit Scotland on this video is extremely hard to believe. It feels very surreal. So I just wanna say thank you and I hope that you have more than just a productive week.